Hey, how are you doing guys? Lewis here with Fidevo from a very rainy Wales today. Uh, even if you're remotely new to filmmaking, you might be familiar with the looks of these two tools. This is a gimbal and this is two thirds of a steady cam. Uh, it's got the vest and the articulating arm, doesn't have the sled which the camera would balance on. But they both do two similar things. They stabilize moving footage in a manner that would otherwise require a dolly, a slider or a crane. But the way in which these two tools stabilized footage is quite different. The gimbal, although requires a balancing setup, tends to focus more on a motor as well as a computer algorithm to offset any motion from the operator and the Steadicam will use inertia and a balancing system in order to smooth out footage and is isolated away from the operator's body. The Steadicam is typically going to be used in conjunction with larger cinema cameras with heavier setups, such as using a heavy cinema lens, while the gimbal will typically be used with smaller cinema cameras, such as the RED Komodo and mirrorless and DSLR cameras. And I think it's fair to say that a lot of people would say that the Steadicam, uh, especially on the higher end, um, such as like the Arri Trinity, is going to produce far greater results. However, what I have here is a attachment from Tiffin, the Steadicam manufacturer, that allows you to combine the best of the motor and computer algorithm to the counterbalance of the Steadicam. Today we're going to have a look at whether this is just a gimmick or perhaps it will take smoothing your footage to a whole new level. For test one, we kicked things off with a seemingly straightforward static shot using the Steadicam and the gimbal and the gimbal by itself. Now I know what you're thinking, why bother with a static shot when we're talking about stabilization equipment for moving shots? Well, it's about laying the foundation for our comparisons. So interestingly, in test one, even in this setting, we noticed some stark differences. The Steadicam held its own, staying more or less completely motionless. But with the gimbal, on the other hand, there is some slight wobble. To the untrained eye, it might not even be noticeable, but hey, we're here to nitpick. For test two, we decided to hit some flat grass, walking leisurely on an even surface with the actor walking towards a vehicle. The Steadicam and gimbal combo in its glory provided silky smooth footage, making it appear almost as if we had set our dolly and jib on the grass. And meanwhile, our trusty gimbal performed really well, but here's where things get a tad interesting. As our subject approached the camera in shot B, the up and down bobbing of the operating became increasingly evident. And once again, to the untrained eye, I don't think this would even be a thing, but as a cinephile, I think there is a difference with the type of motion at hand. With test three, we decided to get adventurous for our third outing, moving sideways on some rugged terrain. Now the Steadicam and Gimbal combo once again impressed us with its finesse, you wouldn't even notice that we were walking out on the Welsh countryside. And the gimbal, it held up pretty well, once again, but if we start to pixel peep, you'll notice that there is some judder in the background. It's not overly distracting, but it was a telltale sign for the terrain's roughness, and this type of judder is associated with gimbal operation. Lastly, we decided to ramp things up, quite literally, by briskly walking up a set of concrete steps. The Steadicam, paired with the gimbal, moved with a completely immersive fluidity, making every step feel like a cinematic journey. There wasn't a single shudder with the motion. And while the gimbal, mostly holding its ground, did exhibit minimal judder, it wasn't enough to break the immersion, but enough to remind us of the mechanical nature. Now, to conclude, I would say in most scenarios, the variance between the shots is minor, and I'd wager the average viewer wouldn't spot it, Yet there is a difference. And it's that sentiment that resonates with filmmaking for me. It's not about one lens or one visual effects plugin that crafts your desired aesthetic. It's an ensemble of the small things. And hey, let's not overlook a crucial aspect. While gimbals have shrunk over the past decade, they can still be quite hefty, especially when paired with a professional lens. And over time, you're likely to experience backaches and arm fatigue. The Steadicam vest and arm do wonders to alleviate this strain. However, as demonstrated in some of the B-roll in the video, using the Steadicam and vest as a solo operator presents its own challenges, especially during setup. It can be quite cumbersome to also transport without a dedicated case. So in conclusion, where do we stand? Well, being able to attach the gimbal to the Steadicam does really smooth out the typical bounce that can be associated with gimbal movement. So that's my take. 
If you're looking to really grab that extra 1% of finesse movement with a gimbal, I think the steady cam attachment can really take you there. I've been Lewis with Fidebo. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you guys next time.